In this video, I'm gonna show you how to replace the radiator on this Volkswagen Jetta. Let's get into it. Before you start this job, you wanna make sure you bring the vehicle to a local shop so that you can have the AC refrigerant removed from the vehicle. We're gonna take the release handle off. You just wanna take a pick or a screwdriver, just get under, there's a little tab right here. Just lift up on that. That just locks it in. Then you want to spread this. So I'll take a straight blade screwdriver and just spread this out. And with that spread, you can separate that. So you're just trying to spread this and there's the pin that goes through the middle there. When you get it past the pin, pull it out. You want to take some trim tools and on both sides, just peel this up a little bit and then slide it forward. There should be some clips on the bottom and some pins in the back. Pop those up and then the grill on the bottom should slide right up. There's a couple pins holding that on as well in those locations, so pull that off. We're going to take these bolts out, use a 10 millimeter socket there. Take those out. Then we're going to use a T30 socket. Take these two bolts out on the sides. And pull that out. Underneath here you should have some fasteners, some screws some T30 screws or some push pins. You want to take those out. Now we're going to take this panel out. I'm just going to use a trim tool or a pick. Just get underneath here. Slide that down and then it comes right out. Now in here, we're going to take this screw out, use a T30 socket. Do the same on the other side. We want to remove these three screws right here. If your vehicle has the lower ones, you want to take those out as well. This one does not have those. You can remove the wheel if you need to, but you sh shouldn't have to. I'm going to use a T20 socket. Take these screws out. With those screws out, you want to do the same on the other side and then just grab the bumper and pull it out slightly and slide it forward. Do that on both sides. Before we pull that out completely, you want to disconnect the sockets for those lights. Just reach in there, pull those out and slide the bumper off. Now we're going to take these two screws out underneath here, use a T20 socket. Take those out. There should be two there. This vehicle only has one. There's two screws on top, the same T20 socket. Take those out. And grab the light assembly and it slides forward. You want to disconnect the connector, push down on the tab and it slides right off. And you can do the same on the other side. We're gonna take this bracket off. This screw right here is a T20 socket. Take that out. Then these four screws, we're gonna use a T30 for those screws. Pull this bracket out. Now we're gonna take these bolts out. There's one right here, one underneath. Take those out with a T30 socket. Do the same on the other side. Using a 13 millimeter socket, we'll take this bolt out. There's another one underneath. Do the same on the other side. 
Before you take the last one out, just hold the bumper and it slides right up. There should be a panel right here and two screws. You wanna take those off using a Phillips head screwdriver. And then also right here, take this one off. Use the same Phillips head screwdriver. And that just slides out. The hood release cable is right here. We're just gonna pop that off. I'm just gonna use a trim tool. Just pry this towards the back of the vehicle. That just pops off and then the little ball comes out and that hood cable is loose. Now we have a connector right here. You want to disconnect the connector. Push down on the tab, slide that off, and slide the connector out. Underneath there is some retainers holding the wires on. Just use a trim tool. Pop those wires off. And slides right out. With a drain bucket underneath, we're gonna drain the coolant. Make sure the vehicle is cold. You don't wanna do this while it's hot and there's, there's no pressure in the system. And just drain the coolant out. We're gonna remove this bolt right here. Use a six millimeter hex socket. You wanna make sure that you had the refrigerant removed before you started this job. Very carefully separate this right here. There we go. And that's just a vacuum that you hear right there it's because the refrigerant was extracted. You might need to do that if there's a little corrosion on there. Just put the bolt back in and just use a hammer and tap it so you can separate that. And slide that apart out of the way. Now we want to take the lower radiator hose off. We're just going to use a straight blade screwdriver. Just get under here, pull up on that clip. Just rock this back and forth. Again, you want a drain bucket underneath because you might lose a little coolant while you're doing this. There we go. Now there's a few connectors right here. You just want to slide these off. We'll disconnect these. Just push down on the tab and slide these apart. Just like that. Do the same with this one. Pull the wires out of the retainer. Pull it aside. Those are disconnected. And there's one more connector up here. There we go. Slide that out. You just use the pick right there. Just pull back on that. Right here where these hoses go, you just want to take a trim tool. Just pry that back, make sure that clamp is separated. Using the six millimeter hex socket, I'm gonna take this bolt out. Slide that out, then grab the hose and separate that, set that aside. Now you wanna remove the upper radiator hose. We're just gonna use a pick. And the same as the lower one, there's a little clamp that holds this on. Just have to get underneath. You can use a pick or a screwdriver. So it's in the service position. And then just rock it back and forth. There we go. Just pop that off. Now using a 10 millimeter socket, we'll take this bolt out on both sides. And 
just grab this whole front end piece and just be careful, make sure there's no wires that are attached. If the headlight with the harness is stuck in there, disconnect that. And this whole piece comes straight forward. Using a T30 socket, we're gonna take these screws out. Grab the fan assembly and slide it off. Now with this whole assembly tipped up, we're gonna take these four screws out, two on this side, two on the other. Use the same T30 socket. And I'm just holding the back side of the radiator so it doesn't fall out the back. down, grab the radiator, and it just slides right out. Now we'll slide these mounts off. You just use a trim tool, get underneath there. Slide those off, just like that. Just keep in mind how they went on. You want to put them on the same way. Now we'll take this bolt out under here. Just use the T30 socket. Then the rest of the bolts, two on this side, two on the other, same socket. and slowly grab the condenser, just tip it up, and it slides right off. Tip the radiator over, and then we're gonna take the sensor off. I'm gonna use a 29 millimeter socket. Loosen that up. Once it's loose, you should be able to just untwist it yourself. With the new radiator, disconnect this plug. Just remove that and put this switch in, our sensor, get that lined up. We'll snug that down. That's good. Now just take the condenser, line it up with the radiator. Just like that. And put the screws back in. Now take the mounts, line those up, and push those on. Might have to tap them on with a little hammer. Just be careful, don't hit them too hard. Now slide the bracket over the radiator and condenser. Get the mounts lined up. And holding this in, we'll get the screws started right there. And tighten those down. I'll slide the fan assembly in place. Line that up. Make sure the wires are not being pinched. Take all the screws, get those all started.
Yeah, we'll snug those down. Now we want to replace the O-rings for the coolant hoses. Just use a pick. Just reach in there. Just grab underneath the O-ring. Slide it out like that. And just line it in there the same way it came out. And it's all the way around. Just going to take a little silicone paste and just lubricate the O-ring so it doesn't roll. I'll do the same on the other one. Now I take the clip and put it back in the regular mode. When you go to push this onto the radiator, those will spread. Do that for the bottom one as well. All right, now I'll line this up. Same way it came out. Bracket lined up. Get these bolts started on the two corners and snug those down. Now line the upper radiator hose up. And push it on, lock it in place. There we go. Make sure that clicks on, and that's good. Now on the end of this line, there's an O-ring. You want to replace that O-ring. Put a new one on. And line that up. Push that in, get the bolt started. And I'll snug this down. And take this bracket, it's gonna line up here, lock it in place. Now I'll take the connectors for the radiator fans, line these up, lock those in. Do the same on this one. And slide these back in position. Slides right into that bracket, just like that. And just make sure they're not rubbing on the fans. Those are good. Take the lower coolant hose, line this up. And push that on. Lock it in place. Now take the AC hose, make sure you replace that O-ring. Line this up. Line that up. Put the bolt in, get that started. I'll snug that down. Make sure it's snug. And the sensor, you want to plug that in. Line the connector up. And lock it down. Now put the front bumper on. Line this up. Get these bolts started. And these smaller bolts, you might have to make adjustments to get these lined up. I'm gonna tighten these down. Take the hood latch. Slide the wire through, get 
this lined up. You can take the hood cable, line that up underneath. Lock that on. Slide that into the latch. Make sure that's all set. It's lined up. And you take the wire, connect the connector, line this up over here in the bracket. And then go along and push the push pins in the right position. Now take this bracket, line it up. sure it's lined up down below as well and get the bolts started. That smaller one and then that other bolt and tighten those all down. Now we'll connect the connector, line it up, lock it in place. That's good. Now I'll put the screws in up top. And two screws down below. And tighten them down. Now take the bumper, line it up. If you want to plug in those side marker lights, you can do that now before you slide it on all the way. Just take the socket and line it up, push it in, do the same on the other side. And it just slips in place. Make sure to slip it in on the sides and just push. It doesn't pull out, it just pushes. Same with the other side. Make sure this is lined up and put the screws back in place. Get those started. Snug those down. And if you have those lower push pins or screws, put those in, and then you can do the same on the other side. And take these screws, line these up. Tighten those down. And take the cover, line it up on the bottom, and then snap it in place. Do that to both sides. And take these screws, get these started. And snug them down. And the other screws go on there and the two sides. Snug those down. Now I take this piece, it's going to slide behind, underneath, make sure the cable is out of the way, and then put the two screws in. Just 
snug those down. And if you have the other piece, you want to put that on right there and snug those down. You can see on the back side where these are going to line up with those slots. Push it down and pins are going to line up here and then slide the clips in. It clips in down there and then same on the other side. Now we're going to line the release handle up. Once it's in there, we're going to spread this just like this just so it can line up in the pin and then we'll lock it down. Slide it through there. There we go. Once you get one side in, it's a little bit easier. Then push down on the clip and it's locked in place. Some vehicles have a little cover that goes right here. You want to swap that over as well. This vehicle didn't have that. After you're done, take the coolant cap off the reservoir, fill it with the appropriate coolant, and then run the engine for about 15 minutes, monitoring it, making sure the engine's not going to overheat. Shut the vehicle down, let it cool for a while. Once it's cool, adjust the coolant level accordingly. When you're done this job, you can bring the vehicle back to that garage so that you can have the refrigerant reinstalled in the vehicle. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.